To get started with this project, download the MOAH zip file and place it in the folder with your name on it. And as we've done with the others, locate that zip file, uncompress it, and add your name to the new folder. Now inside of this folder, there's a variety of different JPEG images that have problems or issues with their photography. And so this project's gonna teach us a variety of different methods of correcting these images. The first one we're gonna open is this rosy JPEG. And let me show you a different way that we can open up a file or a folder in Photoshop quickly. Locate the JPEG, and if you drag it down to the icon on your dock and let go, it'll automatically open up into Photoshop. So that's a quick and easy way of opening up files without having to have Photoshop already open. Now with this image, there are several things that need to be corrected. Some of them are more obvious and some of them are very, very subtle. One of the first things we wanna get rid of is the grainy texture that's on the, uh, the surface of this photograph. To do this, we're gonna use some of our filters. Let's go up to Filter, down to Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. With Gaussian Blur opened up, make sure Preview is checked on. Let's move over to his right eye. When you increase the blur, this will blur out the pixels. And obviously, if you go too much, you can see it'll blur it out way too much. So let's set the radius to be two pixels. And that'll be just enough to get rid of some of the grain texture that's on the surface of his skin. With that done, say OK. Now that we've blurred it out, we actually need to go back and add and resharpen a lot of the image and uh, pull back some of the details that we lost. To do this, go to Filter, down to Sharpen, and choose Smart Sharpen. In this dialog box, as we've done with the other one, click and drag over till you can see the right eye. You may need to zoom in so we can see it closely. And if you don't see the full options that you see here, click on the little shadows and highlights drop down arrow. To bring back the details, let's choose remove and choose Gaussian blur because that was the time blur that we did. Set your amount to be 250. The radius will be two pixels and the noise will be set to 10 pixels or 10%. And under the highlights field, set the fade to be 25%. You can always play around with these settings to get a better, uh, better results. But if you want to see the before and after results, uncheck and recheck preview, and you can see the subtle difference that it tends to make. With that done, we'll say OK. And this is a good saving point for our document. So let's go to File and Save As. Make sure to add your name to the end of it. There we go. In the file format, we want to save this will be as a Photoshop file. So make sure Photoshop format is selected and we're working in the folder with our name on it and we'll hit save. For this next part, let's heal up some of the severe scratches that are around this photograph. I'm going to zoom in so I can see his forehead and bring it down and work right here. There are several little blemishes that need to be taken care of, and there's a couple of tools that we could use to do this. One of the best tools to use is the Spot Healing Brush Tool. You can find these healing brush tools usually above your, uh, your paintbrush. They look like a little band-aid. Do notice that there's a Spot Healing and a Regular Healing Brush Tool. We want to use the Spot Healing Brush Tool. And with it selected, go up to your, your uh, control panel, and let's look at some of the options. Open up the brush size options and we'll set our brush size to be about 20 pixels with a hardness of 100%. And let's set the type to proximity match. What this is going to do is when we use the, uh, the brush, it's going to look at all the pixels around the proximity of the area and it's going to try to match uh, as close as possible those colors and those textures. With that done, let's zoom into this little brown blemish. And with one click, this will cover the area. And when you let go, you'll notice that that blemish is gone. This is because it picked up those pixels that are around that. Now the other tool, the regular healing brush tool, works much like the spot healing brush tool. So with the healing brush tool selected, let's go down to his chin. 
and you can see there's a little white spot down here. Now to use this brush, you can't just click once. If I do that, it'll give me an error. Instead, we need to select where we want these pixels to be. To do that, hold down the Option key, and let's click just below the, uh, the white spot on his chin, right there. You see, when you hold down the Option key, you get the little crosshairs, and when you click, that'll select this area, and you can see as I move my cursor around, it gives me a preview of what it would look like. Now when I click and drag over the area, very quickly and easily, it fills in with that particular spot by copying those particular pixels. This is a good point to save, so let's go to File, and down to Save, and continue on. If you have a major damaged area, like let's go to the very top corner of our document, whoops, too far, and you want to fill in all of this, there's a quick and easy way of doing it. Let's choose our rectangular marquee tool, and with it selected, click and drag over that top corner area so that the uh, entire area is selected. With that done, let's go to Edit, down to Fill, and instead of filling it in with a solid color, change your contents to be Content Aware. With Content Aware selected, this is going to look at all of the pixels that are around it and try to pick up its best guess for what kind of content it should fill it in with. With that done, we'll say OK. And you can see it does a great job of filling it in and also keeping the texture and the same colors that were there before. I'm going to hit Command-0 to back back out. And to deselect it, you can hit Command-D to deselect that area. I see there's some water damage over here on the right side, so I'm going to do Command-plus sign. Let's go over here. And so this little area that's got some water damage, I'm going to click and drag to select that particular area. Again, go to Edit, down to Fill. Make sure Content Aware is selected. When we say OK, it'll fill it in and get rid of that particular area. I even see that I've missed one particular spot. Command-D, click and drag, and then I'll give you a keyboard shortcut. Shift and Delete will also bring up your fill and say OK to that. Let's hit Command-0 to back back out and Command-D to deselect it. Another way of copying pixels is to use our old friend, the Clone Stamp Tool. Clone Stamp Tool is located below your brush and it looks like a little stamp. And make sure you've got the regular Clone Stamp selected. Let's zoom in to over his right shoulder. So I'm going to hit Command plus sign, move in. And what we want to do is we've got a scratch that's going across two different textured areas, the background and his shoulder. And so we want to make sure to copy only part of his shoulder right here without having to disturb the uh, pixels that are on the top and below it. So if we go up to our tool options, let's set this brush size to be about 50 pixels with a 50% hardness. And so this will give us kind of a soft edge to work with. I always recommend a good soft edge whenever you use the clone step. It makes it easier to, uh, to fill in areas without making it look too obvious. Now the Clone Stamp tool works very much like the Healing Brush tool. We need to hold down the Option key and get our little crosshair, and I'm going to select just this little area outside of the scratch area. So one click, we'll select it, and when I let go of my, my uh, Option key, I can move around to get a preview of what will be cloned and copied. And so you can see how it matches the angle, and with one click, I can copy those pixels and place it right here. Now that I've broken it up into two different scratches, this will make it much, much easier to deal with both of those without having to, um, to accidentally blend one area into the other one. The next tool that they want you to use is the Lasso tool. So let's go up to the top of our menu, choose the Lasso tool, and let's use the Content Aware to get rid of both of the scratches. I'm gonna click and drag around this top scratch I'll do Shift and Delete to bring up my Fill menu. I've still got Content Aware selected. We'll say OK, and it gets rid of that area. I can click off to deselect it. Let's select the bottom portion. Shift, Delete. Content Aware is selected. We'll say OK, and now that one's gone as well. 
We'll do Command-0 to back out. I see one last scratch is missing over on the right-hand side, so let's zoom in to this one. And you can use whatever method that you want. I happen to think that the lasso with the content aware tends to be the quickest. And since I've got it, let's select it. Do shift delete to bring up my fill tool. We'll say okay and get rid of that scratch altogether. With that done, we're finished up with this image. So let's go to file and save. And I'm gonna close it out and move on to stage number two.